The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, welcome to the SICA cast. This is Fred Iantorno, Executive Director of SICA. Today's presentation introduces you to the project SICA commissioned to assist member companies and the industry move from the EMS standard to the BMS standards. It is entitled EMS to BMS Mappings. Mike Hastings will be our today's presenter. If you have any questions, please type them into the questions tab on the uh, navigation uh, pain. At the end, Mike will address as many questions as we have time for. I want to thank you for spending your time today with us and to our presenter, Mike Hastings, for sharing his insights and expertise with us. Mike is currently with Control Experts GMBH and has been developing software for the collision repair industry for 32 years. In 1983, Mike co founded Autotech Computer Management Systems. Uh, Mr. Hastings developed the CRMS Collision Repair Management System, which later became the AXO system in 1988. In 1994, Mike joined Mitchell International, where he led the development of ABS, which is a Windows-based body shop management system. Also in 94, Mike served as chairman of SICA's Interoperability uh, Committee Workgroup, uh, which created the SICA's EMS standard. In 2000, uh, three, he served as a committee member for the newly formed VDI Committee, Vehicle Damage and Imaging. In 2004 and 2005, he also served in the Repair Status and Parts Procurement Committees. In 2006, he served in the Repair Invoice Committee. Mike was one of the founders of the uh, Repair Order Committee and served on the Appointment and Scheduling Committee. In 2014, uh, Mike was commissioned by SICA to develop the EMS to BMS mappings, which we'll, he'll uh, present today. Uh, Mike holds a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Toronto. Please join me in welcoming Mike Hastings. Well, thank you, Fred, and uh, welcome everybody to the, uh, the webinar. Uh, um, uh, Fred actually mentioned uh, I've been involved in quite a few of the SICA uh, committees. And uh, way back uh, early on in, in SICA's history, uh, I was one of the EMS guys. I actually uh, chaired the EMS committee. And uh, back in uh, 1994, we uh, originally released the, uh, the EMS standard. Um, in 2003, I was on the VDI committee. Uh, I was one of the committee members. And um, um, I worked with that team uh, to create the, I guess, the first release of the BMS, which included the uh, estimate message and the assignment message. And then last year, um, I worked closely with Fred uh, creating the EMS to BMS mapping uh, project. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Um, just to give you a little bit of history, um, uh, the EMS standard created back in 1994 uh, was based on the DBase file format. and uh, uh, actually, uh, EMS, uh, the standard was created prior to the Internet and prior to XML. Um, back in, uh, in that era, a lot of the uh, body shop management systems actually used the DBase file format for their uh, databases. Um, in, in 2000, um, with XML, uh, we actually, uh, Seek actually created an EMS version 3.0. Uh, it was never released. And uh, that was kind of uh, in favor of, uh, uh, in 2003, the VDI committee actually created the first uh, BMS message, uh, which was the estimate and the assignment. And uh, that uh, they worked very closely with the uh, architecture committee on that. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention is in 2003, uh, we actually created the first mapping of uh, the EMS uh, standard uh, data elements to the BMS estimate. And uh, that 
uh, document is available through CICA. Um, you can uh, get that through Fred or Charlie. Um, and then just last year, we actually, uh, I worked on a project where we actually mapped the EMS to 17 different BMS messages. Um, I did use the original mapping that was created by BDI back in 2003. I think the big difference uh, with what we did last year um, is the format's a little bit different. Um, the, the older 2003 mapping uh, basically was alphabetically by uh, field name or data element name, uh, where the, the messages we mapped last year were more on a schema order. And um, um, I, I think I, you know, I already mentioned we mapped uh, the EMS to 17 different BMS messages. We actually, uh, the mapping is done using an Excel template. Um, it actually maps the EMS code, code list and the BMS code list. There's actually uh, uh, a Word document uh, that uh, has information on the mappings. I'll show that to you. Um, the project contact uh, content uh, is actually, you can download it from the CICA website. Uh, we'll give you a URL uh, near the end of the presentation that uh, allows you to access the document. And it's actually a zip file that includes the 17 Excel documents and uh, there's one Word document. Um, why did CICA create the mappings? Um, well, today many members are using the EMS and uh, if you're actually creating EMS uh, messages today or EMS files, um, we've mapped those uh, uh, over to BMS. So uh, it makes it very easy for you to start creating the BMS messages. Um, you can actually use the templates to search uh, if you know an EMS uh, field name or data element, you can actually reference the actual BMS data element that uh, corresponds to it. Um, and the search works both ways. Um, this will actually help provide a data bridge uh, during migration to full BMS support. And uh, we've also provided the code table reference information. Um, on the next page here, I actually I list the different messages that we mapped. Um, the main one, uh, the vehicle estimate, um, we did a part price change supplement. Uh, that's a message that uh, was part of the uh, EMS standard. And uh, actually, we've mapped that uh, with BMS. Um, the vehicle assignment, the rental assignment, um, we mapped the document attachment. Um, uh, parts request for for uh, for quote. We did a parts purchase order. Um, we did quite a few of the um, the chapter nine, which has to do with uh, repair status. Uh, there's a repair facility ad. There's repair order ad. Repair order close. Repair status change. Um, we did the repair order folder ad, which is basically a repair order with a subset of the estimate data. Um, we did a repair invoice ad. We did two of the, uh, the CSI messages, and we did two of the scheduling messages. And uh, uh, quite a few of these I actually have implemented in the past. Um, there are some of them that were new to me, and uh, it was kind of interesting uh, mapping them to, to EMS. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about next is how to use the Excel templates. Um, we actually uh, use the standard Excel uh, files. Um, the members can go in and add their own columns, so you can actually extend the, the mappings to your uh, products and your, uh, uh, your databases. Um, the template that we used was pretty much uh, uh, set out by architecture, and uh, I pretty much used the same format. Um, the sequence of the rows and the uh, Excel template uh, match the XML schema or the uh, the actual um, uh, XML instance document. Um, we have X paths for the BMS data elements. Um, we list uh, the BMS required uh, data elements so that uh, if there's required fields from the BMS, they're included in the mappings. Um, we left we have references to the code list. And I think I mentioned earlier, you can search both ways. So within Excel, you can do your, uh, your search, your uh, control F, and you can uh, find an EMS field or a BMS field. 
and you can see the mappings. Um, one of the other things I did, and I'll show that to you, is we actually created Excel pages uh, by aggregates, and that makes it very easy to take one of the BMS aggregates and see how it's mapped over to, uh, to EMS. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of some of the mappings. Um, the ones I listed here with a vehicle estimate, which is the key one. Um, I'm going to show you vehicle assignment, and then I have a few others that uh, we can take a look at as well. Um, so at this point, I'm actually going to uh, switch over to Excel and uh, show you some of the messages. Um, the first one I bring up here is actually uh, the, uh, the main estimate. And uh, what I wanted to do is show you the, the different columns uh, in the template. Um, we've created a BMS number here. Typically, uh, this does not exist in the, in the BMS, but uh, we use it here so that you can uh, sequence or order the uh, data elements. Um, we have the actual field name. This is a BMS field name. Uh, we have whether the, uh, it's a required field in the BMS message. Um, we have the aggregate that the, uh, the BMS uh, data element is uh, from. We have the actual X path uh, into the BMS message. And uh, as I scroll over, uh, you'll actually see that uh, the way it's organized is on the, the columns on the left side are the actual BMS messages. And then on the right side, we have the, uh, the EMS field number, which is right out of the, uh, the, the EMS spec. We have a description of the EMS field. We have the actually the EMS um, file or table that the, the data element comes out of. And then we have the actual uh, EMS field name, um, the data element size. And then I actually um, list the, the code list for the EMS uh, uh, spec. And uh, I provided notes in here so you can actually look at the notes, uh, which give you hints uh, when you're doing your implementations. And uh, one of the things I can do is uh, we, we can go and look for, uh, first thing I was going to look for is for uh, the, the VIN number for a vehicle. And um, so I'm going to type in uh, VIN number here, and we're going to uh, go and See if we can find that. And uh, sure enough, we found the, the VVIN, which is the field name in the EMS. And I can scroll over, and it'll show you where that is within the BMS. So you can see it's in the, the vehicle info, VIN info, VIN. And uh, the actual field name in the BMS is called the VIN number. So um, if we need to look at some of the other vehicle uh, fields, uh, common fields, you can see here that there's a model year. Um, we have the make description and the, the vehicle model, and they map back to the, uh, the vehicle uh, info vehicle description within the BMS. So that kind of gives you an example of how you can uh, use the, uh, the mappings to actually uh, map back and forth between the vehicle information. Um, the next thing I want to show you is uh, we actually map by uh, by the uh, aggregates. And you can see the tabs in the bottom, for example, document info. Um, it'll show you how the document info is mapped over to the EMS. And I guess one of the key, uh, key data fields here is the document ID, which maps into the estimate file ID, which is the, uh, pretty much the primary key within the EMS uh, envelope file. Um, I can scroll over, and uh, we take a look at the owner. And you can see how the, uh, uh, the owner aggregate actually maps to the EMS. Um, one interesting thing about the owner is uh, the owner could uh, typically maps to a, what they call a party type in the BMS. And the party type can actually either be an organization or it can be a person. So we provide both, uh, both types of mappings dependent on whether the owner is a person or a company. And uh, I borrowed uh, some of this mapping from the original uh, EMS to BMS mapping that was done by the VDI committee. Um, the next message I'm going to bring uh, show you is actually the, uh, the, the assignment. And bring that up. Um, 
one of the fields I was going to show you is the, uh, we'll look for the owner. Just so typically uh, in an assignment you're going to have a, either a policyholder and a, or an owner and you're going to have an insurer, a claim number, and a vehicle. So um, we're with, basically here I found the owner. And if we scroll back, you can see within the BMS that uh, it's, uh, there's an owner party type within the admin info, and uh, we can see the, the, it's mapped to the last name. The other key uh, information uh, within an assignment would be the phone number for the owner. So we can uh, go down and take a look here at the owner phone number. And if we scroll back, we can actually see in the BMS message that uh, it's uh, in the uh, the party contact info under communications uh, and the actual uh, data element name is the uh, called comp phone. Um, it also provides you with the uh, comp qualifiers that you would use. So you can see here we're actually using HP which stands for a home phone. So um, I, the other information I wanted to show here is we can uh, um, bring up the insurance company. and we'll search for that and we can scroll over and we'll see here that in the BMS that's uh, listed under admin and phone insurance company um, we see the company name there for the uh, insurance company so that kind of gives you uh, uh, a, a quick look at the assignment um, I'll show you one more uh, fairly easy one here which is uh, the repair facility um, which is out of chapter 9 And uh, basically, this message here was uh, created to add a repair facility. Um, and you can see here, um, it pretty much uses, there's a transaction type at the top where you can actually add, change, or delete um, a repair facility. And then typically, out of the EMS, we're looking at the RF information. So we have the company name, um, and then we have the uh, all the address information, phone numbers for the shop. And uh, if we map that over to um, the BMS message, you can see here we have a repair facility. Uh, it's a party type. And uh, we have the company name and all the information that uh, is required. And uh, um, next I'm going to, I think, uh, switch this over. I'll take, we'll take a look at the actual Word document that comes along with the uh, the mappings and um, basically what we do is we list the, the different um, messages that were mapped and then we actually I list here the um, the columns or the actual uh, uh, columns of data that are in the, uh, the Excel mapping tables and uh, I talk a little bit about the data conversions um, when you go from uh, this is more for a developer, but when you when you go from EMS data fields to BMS data fields, um, they, there are some conversions, uh, especially with the, the date and times, and uh, also the phone numbers. Um, so I have information in here on how to do the conversions. And then the other thing I did is I listed the, uh, the, the code list. So you can see um, the EMS code list and which BMS code list uh, it maps to and whether the code values are actually uh, uh, the same or whether that you need to translate. And uh, there's actually some, some of the, the issues I ran into where some of the codes are missing uh, in the BMS that uh, come from the, from the EMS. And uh, I'm going to work with Charlie to get those uh, added into the uh, code list. Um, I, at this point, I'll switch back to the, uh, the presentation here. And, uh, um, go to the next slide. Um, we mentioned uh, early in, earlier on that we actually have some um, URLs that you can uh, use to reference uh, the, uh, the mappings and uh, DMS to BMS mapping.com and that will actually uh, redirect you into the SECA website so that you can access the, um, 
zip file. And uh, I think at this point I'll turn it over to, uh, to questions. Uh, we have one question. Uh, if there are other questions while we're answering the first one, uh, please, um, you know, please type them in. Uh, first off, I want one of the questions was, and I can this one I'll answer, which is uh, very simple. Is our uh, is the uh, is this a webinar being recorded? Yes, it is being recorded. It will be available on the CEQA website uh, within 48 hours of the close of this uh, of this session. Uh, the second one, which probably both Mike and I will answer, but I'll, I'll defer to you uh, uh, for the first one, uh, for the first part of it, Mike. Uh, are each of the fo following estimating systems exporting directly to uh, B BMS, Autotex, uh, CCC, and Mitchell? Um, well, I know what the uh, products the shops are using. I, I do not believe they are. Directly okay. to BMS. Yeah, uh, there. It's in the general price. This is Fred Antorno responding. Uh, they are. It depends on which which messages you're talking about. Each of the three are exporting some messages in BMS. All right. Um, you have to actually ask them for it at this point in time. The products are not necessary. The products that can export or are, are enabled for it, uh, but uh, it's not available, uh, directly available. There are, uh, in our, at our conference, uh, which uh, was uh, earlier this month, uh, we see that we, you know, you, we heard a repairer say that they are receiving, and this is an, a large MSO, that they are receiving repair order uh, messages in, the, in BMS format. Uh, insurance companies have for many years been receiving uh, the uh, vehicle damage and the estimate uh, and uh, other uh, other messages in BMS format. So it's a mixed bag right now uh, for the typical release of a product that simply goes out the door to a uh, uh, to a, a body shop of you know let's say a handful of locations. Th the answer is no for that. For that, but for large MSOs, the answer is yes. Uh, for insurance companies, the answer is yes. But it's also remembering the fact that the EMS is basically about eight, eight to ten messages. Okay, business function messages, whereas the BMS, the business message suite, is 194 business messages. You really have to ask. Get a little bit finer in uh, in the question. Uh, does that make sense? Okay. Uh, and the the question was the estimate, and the estimate uh, is yes, but it's for insurance companies and and la, uh, MSOs that have requested it. Uh, the next one is how do you think we can gain BMS adoption? In front-end integrations between estimating systems and body shop management systems, um, how can we, Mike? Do you have thoughts? Well, what was the question again? All right. Can you repeat how do it? we? I will repeat it. Yes, no problem. Uh, okay. How do we think that we can gain BMS adoption in front-end integrations between estimating systems and body shop management systems? Oh, okay. Well, let me take a crack at that one. Um, you know, I'm thinking that uh, we need to do conversions. So, um, you know, today the uh, estimating systems running at the shops are exporting EMS. Um, what we can do is we can convert uh, EMS into BMS estimates and assignments and actually uh, bring those into the management system as BMS messages. And that way the management systems are, um, you know, basically uh, – ready for uh, the BMS messages once the estimating systems uh, implement them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. They say, what's the value? Here's the, the question. What's the value in only converting some of the messages to BMS? Will that just complicate things? Um, or is it the usable uh, by other partners on the collision repair uh, pr uh, process? Uh, Sika put forth a migration plan 
which is on the web, on the website, uh, and you can uh, and you can go you can you can pull it up there, and there's actually a video and uh, and a document and plan to do that, and um, it's it has to do with the use of uh, adapters, software adapters. Uh, you, it's it's not uh, it's not feasible for every Im installation, every implementation, to simply turn the light switch on or off. Okay, that that just doesn't work, um, and it's just logistically impossible. So Sika has put forth this plan that allows the movement, uh, and it's the the and I don't want to say gradual, but it's it's in a controlled environment, a controlled movement from EMS to BMS. Uh, others, for uh, for example, and I'll just say, you know, uh, scheduling and subrogation. Those are brand. Some of those are brand new functions for which systems are just now becoming available, and those should be done, and and in some cases have been done just natively in the, in the BMS. Yeah, and I think you know uh, to add on to that, uh, Fred. Uh, in the you know the uh, shop management systems, the parts, uh, the parts procurement has has uh, been using the BMS messages. Yes. So that's another area that uh, you know we can translate from EMS to BMS PMP messages. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the, the parts procurement is was uh, was natively set up that way. All right. Uh, and for those systems that did not. Uh, did not put up uh, output uh, a, uh, a BMS mess the, the appropriate BMS message and only a pr and only uh, output the EMS message they use the Sika migration plan and built an adapter so that when the message that did leave the facility it left as a, a BMS and therefore it had all of the security uh, and data uh, uh, requirements uh, of the uh, BMS message itself. Uh, question is, uh, the, uh, the qu a question that comes up is, uh, what, uh, uh, how do you find out which uh, body shop management systems accept uh, BMS messages? Uh, you, at this point in time, you need to con contact the uh, the vendor of that, and they will be able to tell you if, and this is Sika's position, uh, and we ask everyone to uh, uh, to think about doing doing this, is if they currently do not have an output of the BMS message, we ask you to uh, ask them when are they going to have it, uh, because you because you want you want it and need it, uh, and the industry because the industry does need that. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, okay, the question is, what is in place to drive the sunsetting of the EMS? Um, and that's a that's a real good question. Uh, Sika is Sika develops the standards, uh, or Sika the Sika members develop the standards. Sika uh, the standards are developed by the members. Um, there is no uh, policing organization uh, other than the members themselves in the marketplace to say that so uh, in in essence if you think about it in essence the EMS was sunset in January of 2003 there were there were no more make no more maintenance was done to it it is sun, it has been sunsetted uh, from the from a development perspective from from an actual usage perspective, uh, you know, it's there is, you know, it's the functionality of the BMS and the um, and the industry demands of what should create uh, should create that. Uh, and I think I've got. Let me let me take a. Hey second. Fred, uh, just to, to add to that, I think. Um, you know, right now, uh, you know, we're, we're the, the estimating systems are exporting EMS, but um, if they began exporting BMS, I think we would run them in parallel. So, um, 
they wouldn't it wouldn't be sunsetted. You'd still have the EMS available with the the BMS. Yeah. You yeah, know, well, maybe five years down the road, they would be able to remove the EMS after all the implementations with the uh, the management system products could uh, interface with the BMS. So. I I suggest that what you do is uh, you take a look at the migration plan because it outlines it, you know, fairly well. Uh, all of the different uh, aspects of it, uh, and I think that that's you know uh, you know Mike to that to your point. It, I think that's yeah. it's already in there, and it'll show you uh, actually the progression uh, and how it then can be can be removed entirely from the from the system, you know, from the uh, industry, if you will. Right, right, yeah. And, you know, one of the goals of, uh, of Seeker from the beginning was to provide. Uh, interoperability between the applications so that we would reduce the double entry so that's kind of the goal so yeah I would you know again I would see them running in parallel for for probably at least five years um, question says if you do conversion then you will be missing data that you might need that the EMS does not support um, today you know, most of the most of the information or today, if you were simply passing it, um, you know, you're not going to get any more. See, there's there's two things. The the migration plan will tell you. It's a that's a good point, uh, which came from Scott Speckman. Uh, the uh, the thing is that if you just do a, a an EMS to BMS and you used like say the software adapter and now you've replaced it. Uh, the additional data that that's involved is still is still missing, all right, and it still needs to come from someplace else. The best place is to get it from the you know that the application send it. Well, when you're doing a you know a migration, if you will, all right, you you need to take into account those kinds of things, and so those are plans are are set up and they're and they're in the they're in the plan as to how to go about doing that. Uh, so you take a look, and we can, you know, and if there's, uh, you know, uh, a desire, we can probably have another webinar um, of that. So if, if for all of those that are on the call, if you want to have a webinar on the data migration plan itself, just send us a, a, an email. Send me an email at fred at sika.com, and uh, we'll factor that into the uh, to the, two, the early 2016 uh, set of webinars. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have. Is there something else you might want to add, Michael? Yeah, no, that was a good question. You know, and uh, some, sometimes you have to be creative and uh, use workarounds like the uh, top secret uh, data field in the uh, envelope. So, um, you know, there there definitely are fields that uh, you can uh, reuse for other needs. But uh, you know, it is a, it definitely is a good point uh, that. Uh, the BMS, uh, you know, adds quite a few uh, features on top of what EMS did, and you got to remember EMS is what now almost 22 years old. So, yes, but uh, yeah. Well, the document that we've created that that Seek has commissioned uh, Mike to, to develop and and so forth. Uh, if you were to when you if you were a developer, this document. And we kind of estimated it would be saving thousands of dollars for the members that are going to go through this process. The other thing which Mike didn't touch upon is if you go from BMS to EMS for some other for some reason you, you need to do that, you can simply sort on different fields. So you can do EMS to BMS mapping, BMS to EMS mapping, just by sorting on the different columns. Uh, but the reality is um, when you're going going into a project, uh, an initial project of BMS, this particular document is going to save thousands of dollars, hundreds of man hours uh, of uh, work for for people. So please uh, go ahead and and do that, uh, Mike. Yeah, you got the next slide will tell you where where to find oh, okay. all this stuff. Oh, we missed uh, it. Let's see. Missed Actually, that. there it yeah, is. It's right here. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, Fred, maybe you can. I explained the EMS to BMS mapping. Uh, maybe you can talk about the other two URLs. Okay. Uh, understanding the BMS is a is a document, uh, and it's really it, it goes through all of the messages, all 194 messages, uh, 
and it uh, explains them in a, in a business, more in a business oriented uh, fashion. Uh, so if you're a technician, you, you get to see it's a nice place to take a look at here are all the messages. Uh, you can pass it on to your business people. Uh, and in fact, you could pass that on to your business people that are going to talk to the three information providers and put pressure on them to, uh, to do that. Uh, BMSRoadmap.com. Uh, this is kind of like a roadmap of the uh, uh, of the messages, and it's at a higher level. So it's again, these two are more business oriented. Uh, obviously, the uh, EMS to BMS mapping, uh, which you know we, we put on here, contains those three documents that Mike uh, uh, explained. So, okay, well, thank you, Mike, and thank you, the audience, for participating. Uh, summarizing the educational offerings for the rest of the year. Uh, next is a SICA cast uh, on uh, October 20th, which is inside the SICA committees. Um, and uh, ending uh, the year on November 17th uh, with what's new in the 2015 R2 release. Uh, I want to thank all of you for uh, attending today. And you have a great day. And remember, one thing is that within 48 hours, the the, the presentation will be uh, uh, will be you know uh, online, so you can take a look at it. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks, Fred. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.